Another concern is uh, that whenever we jigger things up, especially in the financial services area, whenever the uh, natural impediments to reform uh, get erased, whenever the logjam of blockage by special interests goes away, we always worry that whatever is done is going to be infected by special interests and have that uh, deficit as well. And also, finally, I worry about complacency. So if we make a reform and think it's going to solve our problems, we then might get complacent and not pay attention to what the real problems are. For example, the Sarbanes-Oxley Act, in my opinion, was adopted by Congress for you know, well-intentioned reasons but it had kind of the idea that now we've solved our problems with corporate governance. We have Sarbanes-Oxley. But that can actually exacerbate rather than solve the problem because it leads to complacency in the sense that the, somebody is mining the store. Well, we can't be sure that someone is mining the store. So I have a certain amount of, of at least agnostic skepticism about these proposals for regulatory reform. Also, we have some examples. So the Uber regulator, there are Uber regulators in the world um, that have a very different structure than in the United States, but the Uber regulators didn't do any better than the regulators in the United States with all their balkanized jurisdiction and so on. So the evidence that we have is not very strong that an Uber regulator will do the job. With respect to uh, the idea of goal-focused regulation, again, it's an excellent idea. It has a lot uh, of appeal. But when we look at goal function, goal purpose regulation, it hasn't always done the job either. And I revert again to the Financial Stability Forum in Basel, who, which is a classic goal-focused regulator, at least entity, and utterly failed to do the job. Uh, there may be some value to having a regulator that has multiple purposes because you get the kind of creative back and forth and exchange of information that might be useful. So I um, personally feel that these are good ideas. They're worth exploring. They might be very much worth adopting, but we should look at them very carefully. And we should also take account of the essential things that went wrong. They weren't so much that there was a problem in regulatory structure. It was a much deeper set of problems having to do with the fact that we got into a <coughs> massive uh, speculative bubble economy. And when we get into that uh, situation, it's going to be risky no matter who is our regulator and no, no matter what their regulatory function is. So we have to not let this happen again. The problem is that in uh, financial markets, these things happen time and again, and we just don't seem to be able to stop them. So I guess the, the answer is let's explore these. Let's think about them carefully with an open mind and a receptivity to re change, but let's also be skeptical and test them against the light of experience. Yeah, I just um, uh, very briefly want to say um, uh, the notion that um, because uh, people may not um, uh, be able to foresee a problem means we shouldn't try um, strikes me as really dooming us uh, to just, uh, um, you know, constantly uh, being surprised and so on. Um, the test of regulation isn't whether it prevents crises or problems. The test of regulation is whether it minimizes the risks and make certain that the proper values are um, inculcated into the uh, financial and capital market systems we have. So the goal isn't to prevent future crises. That's impossible. But just by saying that doesn't mean we should therefore say, OK, well, uh, we can't uh, deal with that. One could argue, by the way, that looking at the, uh, the enforcement approach to life, which has marked the SEC, for example, and which would be a bellwether of the uh, Consumer um, uh, Financial uh, Protection Agency, is that when government feels compelled to bring an enforcement action, it is already evident that regulation has failed. Uh, because the only time you need to bring an enforcement action, at least in theory, is when somebody hasn't lived up to the system. And if regulators were really effective and efficient, nobody would ever violate the law. Well, we know that's not going to happen either. Um, I just don't think we can um, uh, take an approach that says we're not going to be able to prevent this, so um, we shouldn't. The 
real fundamental problem that I see with how we approach this is that people get caught up in philosophical debates. Some people argue we need more regulation. Some people argue we need less regulation. Some people argue we need more regulators, and other people argue we need fewer regulators. In my view, the answer um, in both cases is neither. We don't need more or less regulation. We need smarter regulation. And we don't need more or fewer regulators. We absolutely need smarter regulators. We haven't had that. Um, sometimes we do, and in some places it's great, but it's very, very spotty. And we have to do a better job of making the regulatory system function as efficiently as it can, recognizing the inherent limitation that we'll never prevent the next crisis. Thank you. I know you tried to uh, enhance the uh, the ability to attract staff at uh, the SEC when you were there. I don't know. Do you, do you consider your uh, your efforts uh, to have brought uh, brought better talent into the agency? Um, Actually, um, uh, there were some very good people, but the answer is um, no. Um, and, and it's sort of an interesting um, facet um, of how Congress approaches these issues. Um, the SEC, for example, is an over-lawyered um, agency. I can say that as a recovering lawyer. Um, but um, it's over-lawyered. It hasn't anywhere near the number of economists, um, the number of market specialists, MBAs, and the like, so that um, there has to be a better recognition that the problems that we're dealing with are economic um, and that they can't always be solved um, by um, sort of a black letter law approach of saying, well, this is good, that has to be bad. I mean, you need regulators who can understand the markets they're regulating, and all too often, I think we lose a lot of that, and that's not just the SEC, it's, it's all over the, uh, the uh, government. Yeah. Mr. Wallman, we'll give you an opportunity, and then we'll go to the questions, too, if you need to respond. Yeah, there, there are a number of points just made that I would agree with, and. Uh, thought uh, pretty clearly are part of the, the picture here. Uh, we will never be able to ensure that there are no crises again. There's a book that came out, I mentioned this yesterday, a little while ago, uh, called something like, um, uh, this time it's different, uh, 800 years of financial buzz, bu uh, bubbles and busts. Um, you know, it's, 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 the, it's the point that's clear. This will go on and on. There will always be these kinds of issues. Uh, Greenspan, uh, made his famous statement about irrational exuberance in 1996. Uh, and at that point, the view was that the markets were way too high, uh, way overpriced, and that there was going to be an imminent collapse, and there should be. Uh, in fact, the market went up for the next three and a half years, and anybody who sold out when he said that there was irrational exuberance lost out in one of the biggest bull markets uh, of all time. So, you know, we're, we're in a position where no matter how smart you are, it's just hard to foresee these things. And to expect governments to be able to foresee them is simply uh, a fool's errand. Uh, the, the issue, though, of can we come up with a better regulatory structure so that, in fact, government and regulators, once something happens, they can both be better prepared for it and to the extent that something is controllable, they can better control it and try to eliminate or at least reduce some of the damages it causes. Those are clearly worthwhile goals. There's no reason for us to believe that the regulatory structure and the system that we set up 80 years ago or 90 years ago, depending on which agency you're looking at, et cetera, is, is the right structure for today. I mean, why would that possibly make sense? You know, we're, we're, bat, we're past buggy whips. We're past all sorts of things at this point. Why do we think that the governmental structure that was relevant in a world in the 1920s, 1930s, is the one that makes sense today? And we ought to revisit it. We ought to look at it again. But I'll tell you, it's extraordinarily hard to do because it's very hard to get people, especially lawyers, to rethink the concept of defining regulation in terms of securities or banking products or insurance, et cetera. It's very hard to think about redefining regulatory goals as the mission of an agency as opposed to regulating a particular kind of product or service. And so we're, we're I think, doomed for a while at least to be stuck with a regulatory apparatus that by definition is going to have debilitating abilities in terms of its capability of being able to do much.